Hey, Vision Chase, this is Dr. Bird here with the Social Studies lesson for you today. Throughout American history, there have been four presidents who were assassinated. They are Lincoln, Garfield, McKinley, and most recently, John F. Kennedy in 1963. Now, I'm reading a, a very interesting book, and I wanna share uh, with you some information that I've learned so far from this book about the assassination of James Garfield, the second president uh, to be assassinated while in office. And his death really centers around what was called the spoils system at the time. And there is a, there's a, there's a saying that goes like this, uh, to the victor go the spoils. So that means that the person who's won something or if you've won a war, that means you get to take whatever you want because you're the winner. And so a lot of politicians believe this to be true, uh, especially at this time. A lot of people were big on the spoil system. And so here's what they took uh, when they won. Um, take a little step back. Uh, when someone runs for office, they need money and they also need people to run out and support that person uh, to get that person's word out. Now, once that person wins office, let's say it's uh, the, the title of governor, someone is elected governor. Uh, well, the person who uh, is elected governor, if they believe in the spoil system, what they'll do is they'll turn around and they'll give their supporters uh, jobs within the government as a way to say, thanks for helping me out. And this system was widely used, but there, there were people, there were uh, opponents of this system, people who didn't like this system. And so at this time, uh, within the Republican Party, there are there's two groups of people. There are uh, who are called the stalwarts. Stalwarts, those are people who were for the spoil system and, and taking care of their buddies. And then there was the other group called the half-breeds. The half-breeds. Uh, James Garfield was a half-breed. And half-breeds, they did not like the spoil system and they wanted... They wanted to see it go away. And definitely because James Garfield felt that way, he made a, a lot of enemies of the stalwarts. Now again, remember stalwarts, those are people within his own party, the Republican party uh, that didn't like him because he disagreed with the spoil system. And one more thing about the half breeds, they wanted a system of rewarding jobs based on people's skills rather than just, hey, you're my friend, I'm gonna hook you up with the job. So James Garfield never, ever, ever wanted to be president and, and he was actually nominated by his party against his will. He did not want to be president. So just a few days after he was nominated, the person who would kill James Garfield uh, Charles Guiteau was his name. He was in a terrible accident in which two steamboats collided against each other. And he actually survived this horrific accident. And he believed that, you know, this was God's plan uh, to save him so that he could carry out the murder of James Garfield. And Charles Guiteau was not a well man. He was mentally ill and he needed help. So after trying to find his place in life, uh, doing different things, uh, Charles Guiteau turns to politics. And so he identified with the Republicans and he ended up giving one speech to support Garfield's candidacy for president. And because of that one speech, he believed that President Garfield owed him a favor. Now, Guiteau wasn't the only person to do this. In Garfield's diary, he writes about the numerous people who were lined up uh, waiting to ask him for a job. So this was not uncommon. But Guiteau was a little different. Guiteau had an issue with the truth. He lied and he also ran up debts that he never paid. So here's, this is a letter. This is part of a letter that he actually writes to the president. He says, uh, next spring, I expect to marry the daughter of a deceased New York Republican millionaire. And I think we can represent the United States government at Vienna with dignity and grace. And this job is simply to be a representative of the United States in Vienna. Now that's a very nice job. 
And oh, by the way, the part about marrying the daughter of a deceased billionaire, that was a lie. So Garfield doesn't even respond to this letter. So Gitto, being a persistent man, he doesn't give up and he writes another letter. And in part, it reads this. I called to see you this morning, but you were engaged. I sent you a note touching on the Austrian mission. The current Austrian council, I understand, wishes to remain at Vienna till fall. He is a good fellow, and I do not wish to disturb him in any event. What do you think of me for Council General at Paris? Ooh, that's a nice job. He says, I think I prefer Paris to Vienna, and I presume my appointment will be promptly confirmed. So now Charles Guiteau is angling for a job in Paris. Really, really nice job. And he badgers, he badgers the president and his cabinet members and the staff because he really, really wants this job. And it's just unbelievable the access that Guiteau has to the president. It is just, it's shocking, it really is. So finally, after all of this badgering, uh, President Garfield's Secretary of State, James Blaine, blows up at Guiteau and tells him, stop coming around here, stop asking him about the job, you're not gonna get this job. And this was a pivotal moment for Guiteau. Guiteau starts to feel that Garfield is a danger to the country because he is not honoring the spoil system, like the other stalwarts want him to. So on numerous occasions, Guiteau is so close to the president. It is just, uh, his access to the president is shocking. So on uh, numerous occasions, he could have actually, he had his gun with him and he had planned to go and, and kill the president, but he decided not to. But, but ultimately on July 2nd, 1881, Charles Guiteau shot President Garfield in the back as he was about to board a train. And after 11 grueling weeks of pain, uh, James Garfield ends up dying. Guiteau goes on trial and he is eventually executed for his crime. They hang him. But what is really interesting is the things that happened after he was shot. Because because many believe that it was actually not the bullet that killed him. It was the infection that came after he was shot that actually killed him. Many believe now that had this happened today, he'd be out of the hospital after a couple days and he'd be fine with that same wound. But unfortunately, at this time, doctors did not practice safe measures. Um, it was actually, you know, custom if customary if uh, a surgeon dropped a tool they just picked it right back up and they went to work and it's really interesting because this book talks about the fact that there was a doctor who for years was trying to plead with other doctors around the country to use safe practices to prevent the spread of germs use antiseptic so you don't infect your patient and uh, it was sad that this message did not get to the people who were working on President Garfield because, you know, one of the very first things that uh, the doctor did as he was working on Garfield on the floor of this, on the dirty floor of this train station was he, he took his hands, his unclean hands and, and stuck them in, in the bullet hole. And that possibly is, is the point where that where he was in, infected and ultimately that would end up taking his life. But this doctor who would go around trying to plead with, with other doctors to use antiseptic, his name was Dr. Joseph Lister. And in another interesting turn, uh, they could not find the bullet. The bullet was lodged in President Garfield's body. And so doctors would stick these tools, these unclean tools inside President Garfield's body to try to get the bullet out, but they couldn't get the bullet out. And so uh, they call in uh, a famous inventor at the time. He invented uh, this thing called the telephone. His name was Alexander Graham Bell. And what they asked him to do was create a device to help them find the bullet. This was the time before the x-ray machine was invented. And so they asked him to create a device to help them find 
the bullet. And he came up with uh, basically this tool that would, I, I think of um, the board game operation when, when I think of this because um, he came up with this metal detector because this is the time before the x-ray machine. So uh, this metal detector that would you know hover over the president's body and when it detected the bullet, it would make a sound. And I encourage you to do your own research to find out more about this. So the most important change that came about as a result of the death of President Garfield was the Pendleton Act. Um, a lot of politicians looked around and they realized that this spoil system is just, it's crazy. And um, his death actually unified the Republican Party and everyone agreed that, you know, the spoil system, it, it came at a very costly price. Um, the country was shocked to see uh, this president was assassinated. And so um, as congressmen, they were able to get together and pass the Pendleton Act. And basically the Pendleton Act made sure that you know, federal government jobs were awarded based on merit, based on people's skills. Could, were they able to do the job? And not because, well, you helped me get elected and so I'm gonna hook you up with the job. So it got rid of the spoil system. Well, that is our social studies lesson for the day. I thank you so much for watching. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Also, you can download the worksheet that goes along with this video to better understand the assassination of James Garfield and the spoil system. Well, I thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.